Let me ask you real quick, and I want the show of hands. How many of you are blessed in this place? I need your hand. Raise your hand up. How many of you are blessed? Let me help you. You're all blessed. Every one of us are blessed. When we woke up this morning, we were blessed. We've got breath in our lungs. We're blessed. You drove here tonight. Guess what? You're blessed to be able to drive here. You didn't go hungry today. You're blessed. Every one of us are blessed in this place. And so I come tonight to talk to you on this night of blessing, and I'm not going to take a long time. Uh, maybe, maybe not. We've got food here if I do. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, but... Uh, but again, we are not, we are all blessed, but here's what I know. And the message tonight is titled, Blessed to be a Blessing. You, you are blessed. Everybody here is blessed to be a blessing to other people. And so what I want us to do, go on and turn to the third chapter of the book of John tonight. Uh, and and uh, again, we, we have not, as you're looking that up, we have not been blessed. None of us have been blessed just so we can just sit here. But God has blessed us so we can be a blessing to other people. God has said, I want to bless you so you can bless somebody else. So many times what happens is people become like a sponge. If you ever saw a sponge, you throw a sponge, a dry sponge into a bucket, it will absorb the whole thing in the bucket and then the sponge is heavy and, and that just holds it in. But we need to not be like a sponge, we need to be like a funnel. And so when God blesses us, instead of us just soaking it all up and waiting and not doing anything about it, we need to be a funnel and let the blessings of God flow through us. Now here's the thing about a funnel, any of you that ever use a funnel, whether you use one for cooking, whether you use one for changing oil or whatever it is, if you notice inside that funnel, when you pour it in, even if it's water, there's still some residue in the funnel. It doesn't all leave the funnel. There's still residue in it. And you say, Pastor, what are you saying? Here's what I'm saying, that if you're getting blessed, it's flowing through you. Guess what? It's not going to all flow out of you. You're still going to have the residue of being blessed, and you're going to be able to bless others. And so the Lord is saying, look, I did not bless you. I did not give you what I gave you just so you could sit on it and just so you could just hoard it, but he said, I bless you so you can be a blessing to others. They said, in fact, the Dead Sea. They said the Dead Sea takes in, but it doesn't put nothing out. I don't want to be a person that is like the Dead Sea and says, you know what? Just feed me. I'm going to take it in. I'm, I'm not going to put anything out, but I'm just going to take it in. I don't want to be that kind of person. I don't want to be that type of person that says, you know what? I don't really care about others, and I definitely don't want to be that type of Christian that says, you know what? I'm not going to bless anybody else. And so what happens if we're not careful, we find ourselves in, in and again, we're in this Christmas season, this is a night of blessing, and, and we find ourselves wanting to receive instead of blessing. It's about, well, I want to receive, I want to get it. And so tonight, I want to talk to you about generosity. Look at your neighbor and say, Generosity. Here's what I found in life, almost, almost 62. I'm all, almost 62. My wife corrected me the other day. I made a statement and said I'm 62, and she said, you're not 62 yet. Okay, I'll be 62 in a couple months. And so I think she does that because she's older than I am, and, <laughs> and so uh, she's four weeks older than I am, by the way, so, uh, but, but. Anyway, it, it really is. I have found out in my life that it really is about being generous. It's about being generous. It, it is about, there is nothing in life that will make you feel any better than if you're generous to other people. It, it will change your life. If you're taking notes tonight, write this down. If you're not taking notes tonight, write this down. To be smart, spend carefully. Some of you young folks need to put this down. Because it will help you. I wish I would have known this back when I was a teenager. To be smart, spend carefully. To be wise, save carefully. And to be genius, give extravagantly. And so if we learn to live this way, then generosity is going to just become a part of our life. How many, I know people, there are people that I know, there are people in this church, they're just generous people. 
I mean, they just are. They're just, it's just something they do. They're just generous. And so what I want to do tonight, I want to, again, and this is going to be more teach next week. Let me throw this out. Pastor Chris Smith is going to be here next week with us, and the carpet will catch on fire. We'll have to hose it down before he gets here or something. And so you're going to get that next week. He will be here with us. We're looking forward to that. But you got me tonight, and so I'm going to talk to you from a pastor's point of view. And I want us to look at one of the most known scriptures no demand is John 3 16 most of you don't even have to look at it for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him and, and so again we're not going to perish we're going to have eternal life think about that we're, if we believe in him and so I want to give you some things about generosity and, and again I hope you're taking notes the first thing is this generosity begins with God. It, it begins with him. Let me help. Man did not come up with generosity. It was not something that we come up with and said, well, hey, we ought to be generous. It was not our idea. It began with God. God, God is the one that created generosity. The Bible says this, before the foundations of the world, a lamb was slain. But before the foundation, in other words, before God ever created this planet, before he ever gave his only son, or he gave his only son as a sacrifice, before he ever created anything. And so we need to understand tonight, you know what? Generosity comes from God. Generosity comes from him. And you say, Pastor, well, I know people that are generous that they don't live for God. They're, they're, not, they're not a Christian. I get that. I understand that. But you know what? It really doesn't negate the fact that generosity still began with God. It doesn't matter. It still began with him. I, I mean, think about it. Look at the world we live in. How many of you, this time of year especially, look, look, at, look at, just go out in the morning and look at the trees. How beautiful are the trees? Think about it. God did not have to design them that way. There could have been leaves and then they could have all dropped off at once. What about all the sand? We don't need that much sand. But yet God designed it that way. So we would have the deserts. We'd have the beaches. The mountains. What about the mountains? The snow-capped mountains. God designed it that way. He designed it. It's so, the sunrise. Some of you don't know, but the sunrise is in the east. <laughs> and, and if you look in the eastern sky in the morning, it starts getting bright. And then pretty soon, you'll see the sun coming up. And that is one of the most beautiful things. What about the sunset? Have you ever, I've never in my life seen a boring sunset. You know, you'll see people posting pictures of how beautiful the sunset is. And I thought, man, I wish it was that pretty here. But if you really get to looking at it and taking a picture, it is. Why? Why is that? God, why did you do that? Because he's a generous God. He's a generous God. He said, look, I want to give you these things. I'm going to be generous to you. And so he created them for us. So this is the generosity of God. And so, again, I meet people all the time who, who claim to be Christians, but all they want to do is receive. They don't want to do anything to, to be generous. They don't want to. And so you got to understand that we need to be generous as Christians. We got to be generous. It's Christians. Number two, let's look at 2 Corinthians 8 and 7. 2 Corinthians 8 and 7. Notice that the screens. It's not up there. I want you to bring your Bible. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. The second thing about generosity is that generosity is the visible expression of my love for God. It's a visible expression for my love for God. In the book of James, he talks about seeing somebody that is in need, and he said that it's not enough when we see somebody in need to just look at them and say, hey, go, go on your way and have your needs met. He said it's not enough to do that. James said if you want to see my faith, watch what I do. 
What, watch what I do. I, I don't just tell them to go. The apostle Paul said this, I can even give my body to be sacrificed, but if I don't have love, it doesn't accomplish anything. So it's one thing for us to say we're a generous person. It's one thing to say, man, I love God with everything inside of me. It's another thing to live that out day in and day out. It's one thing to say, you know what, I, I, I put God, for, but, but it's another thing to live that out day in and day out. It, here's what's crazy to me. And we're just talking tonight. Look at your neighbor and say, he's just talking. We're just talking. We're just talking. That's all we're doing. We're just talking tonight. It's crazy to me how church people, some church people, how mad they get when we start talking about being generous. I mean, they slice tires <laughs> on that blue minivan. <laughs> Israel's went through 12 sets of tires. <laughs> 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 but, but it's crazy because people get upset when we talk about being generous. You know, some of you tonight have already shut the notes on you're like you you put your earbuds in you're listening to something else because you I, I don't want to hear that I don't want to but here's the crazy thing we don't do that when Walmart asks us to be generous or they don't ask, yeah they ask us to be generous they, <laughs> how many of you have been to get groceries lately they, they want you to be real generous they, they want you to be able to do that and, and so we, we brag about Walmart's falling prices I think that's what they do, isn't it, now? I haven't been in there so long. I could go back and say we, we talk about Kmart blue light specials. <laughs> Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. Some of you do. But we brag about how much we save when we go shopping. Man, I save this, I save that. And again, it, it amazes me because people will talk about that, but we come and talk about generosity. We talk about being blessed to be a blessing. We talk about those things, and people really get upset. And you go, Pastor, you got to understand something. When I go for, uh, to Walmart that, you know, I'm buying stuff, and I get stuff for my money. Let me help you real quick. You know what? You can never outpay God. You can never give more than he will give you back. He has blessed you abundantly. And, man, I, I tell you what, again, I cannot outgive him. And so we, we ought to be bragging about what God does. Here's what amazes me. And some of you know, it amazes me how people, uh, uh, <laughs> we're just talking, remember? <laughs> it amazes me how people want you to pay their rent while they're talking on a brand new cell phone, driving a brand new car, going out. To, do you realize going out to McDonald's to eat for two people's now about 20 bucks? I mean, it's crazy, it, but it's cr when people will talk, and, and you see them, and they're, they're like, they're going, and, and they say, well, I need help. I saw a thing uh, that I read to my wife yesterday, and I thought it was so good, and I probably won't be able to remember exactly how it said, but um, can you remember that? Must not have been that good. <laughs> It was talking about taking care of your needs first and then your wants later. It said we get it turned around. We buy our wants and then beg for our needs. I'm talking about being generous. Again, remember, we're just talking. We're just talking tonight, but I'm, I'm going to help you tonight. I want to help you in this. Where, where did, where, and again, I know, as Pastor Derek said, I'm talking to the choir, I get that, but, but you got to give me a moment because I've got to talk about this. Where, where did we miss it as Christians? I, I mean, that part of generosity where we're just living it out, I mean, doing good and releasing what we've been given. Where, where has the Christian world missed it where we just say, you know what, God has been so good to me. I mean, again, it's not about all that I have, it's about what I have been given and how I can be a blessing to other people people with what I've been given and so let's dig a little bit deeper let's let's look in the book of Romans the 12th chapter verse 1 it says therefore I urge you brothers and sisters 
in view of God's mercy, to offer your, bo offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So the apostle Paul is saying, you know what? Worship is giving of yourself. It's giving of yourself. It's giving everything about you as a living sacrifice to God. God, I'm coming in and I'm worshiping you. Here's the third thing. Generosity begins with my money and possessions, but it doesn't stop there. I, I believe in giving of my offering and tithe. I believe it. Like Pastor Derek said, God's never failed me. I believe in giving that. But you know what? Not only do I believe in doing that, I believe we ought to help other people. I think we ought to help someone out. I think we ought to give to the home. I think we ought to do that. I think we ought to do, and thank you so much for being a part of this, for us to be able to bless the food pantry. I think that we ought to do that. And, and again, but I think that is just the beginning of the process. I think that's just starting. So living for God is, is giving of myself. I, I give of myself as I'm living for God. True generosity is, is giving of myself to the point that I am willing to sacrifice. Don't miss this. I am willing to sacrifice so that somebody else can be blessed. L let me throw this out. Why do some of the I serve team, why do all of the I serve team that's serving on that day come early? Because they're sacrificing so somebody else can be blessed. That's why they come an hour early. That's why they don't do it because, well, you know what? We just, we just, we're just early people. We like, no, they're, they're doing it. They're sacrificing. And so what they're doing is saying, you know what? I'm going to give myself to the point I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to do this that somebody else can be blessed. And, and so, again, wh why should, let's talk about this. Why should Christians be generous? Why should we be generous as Christians? Why? Matthew 6, 21, it says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so the number one reason we as Christians ought to be generous is because guess what? Generosity will change you. I'm telling you, generosity will change you. Because here's what I've always said, and this is so true, and everybody here has probably heard this statement. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Don't miss it. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Because here's the thing. You can give to anybody. You can give to people that you don't even know. But you know what? You cannot love somebody and not give to them. You say, well, give me an example. Very simple. Grandkids. They can have anything I've got, and they know that. And you say, well, they're spoiled. That's fine. They're my grandkid. But, but why? Because I love them. Here's something else. And I was thinking about this as I put it together. There is nobody that is sitting here tonight or comes on Sunday morning that can't have, if they need it, whatever I've got. If you're here and you're in need of something, I always used to say this for years, and I haven't said it in a while, don't go hungry as long as I'm here. Now, you might not have steak. You might be eating baloney. And it might be deer baloney. But don't go hungry. Now, here's the thing. If you're eating steak, I'd like to have a piece of steak too. Don't you eat steak and make me eat baloney. But I'm saying that, and we're just talking. I'm saying that, why? Because I love this place. And I literally love you people. And so I mean that when I say it. If you don't believe me, ask anybody that's been here. I'll give you whatever. If you need it, I'll give you whatever you, you need. Except my truck. <laughs> don't ask for my truck. <laughs> no, but seriously. Why? Because I can give to you and not love you. But if I love you, I'm automatically going to give to you. And so we have to remember that. So where my treasure is, there my heart is. Where that is, there my heart is. If my treasure's on earth, guess where my heart's going to be? Guess where it's going to be? And so as I'm doing what God says, I'm being generous, 
and I'm faithfully coming to the storehouse, just like the Word of God says, and I'm bringing my finances that God has given me, and when I do that, I'm changed. I'm a changed individual. Now, watch this. I don't just do it when I come into the house of God and say I've met my legal requirement and that's I've met my requirement to be on the stage. I've met my requirement to teach. Generosity, don't miss this, it becomes a lifestyle. So I'm not just doing it here, I'm doing it everywhere. I'm just being generous. And so it has to become a lifestyle. Matthew 6, 25 through 26, it says, Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life. How many of you worry about your life? And nobody's going to raise their hand. Stop it. He said, don't worry about your life, what you're going to eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And so not only does generosity, I'm going to help you. If you again, if you will apply this, not only does generosity change me, it also frees my heart. It'll free your heart. God knows every detail about us. Every one of us, he knows it. He, he knows every intimate detail. He knows everything. And if this is true, why do we live our lives with our, our fists closed so tight? Why do we do that? Generosity will free your heart. It, it will free you up. I, and you say, how can that be? Because I know who gave it to me. I know where it came from. I, I understand that he gave it to me, and I know that if I will open it like this, guess what? Not only is God going to bless others through me, but God is going to bless me. Matthew six thirty three. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Man, I don't understand why things aren't working. I do. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The third reason that we need to be generous is because generosity helps us to invest in what matters. It helps us invest in what matters. I mean, we know in this world we live in, we know the market fluctuates. We, we, we understand that. The financial market fluctuates. And, and here's the thing. Whatever you have given, whatever I have given in the name of the Lord, whether it be your tithe and offering, whether it be giving to somebody else, whatever you have stored up in heaven is still there. Whatever you have done, you look over the years and you say, man, I've done, you know what? It's still stored up in heaven. Heaven is not crashed. You don't have to worry about it falling apart. You don't have to check and say, well, I don't know. if it, The economy of God is still stable. Amen. And so God is taking to, into account. The Bible says that he knows when you have given a cup of cold water, think about that, in his name. And if you do that, it says you're going to receive a reward. That's in the book. He said, look, I know if you've done that for me. And so those, here, here's something, here's a, here's a, I haven't done these in a while. Here's a refrigerator note. Those that have been blessed by God become blessers for God. Those that are blessed or have been blessed by God become blessers for God. And so you say, pastor, what does that mean? It means that you're blessed to be a blessing. So how do we do this? How, how do we practically do this? How are we? Well, here's the first thing. The first thing that we do is we give our time. We give our time. You know, I have some weeks. There, there are days, there are days that I am so busy, or like I mentioned to you earlier, I would rather give money because I'm so busy, I just don't have the time. I would rather walk by and put a 20 or a 50 in that person that's ringing that door or ringing that bell in front of Walmart than to stand there and ring that bell. 
I, I would rather do that. I, I would rather do that. And that doesn't mean I'm a bad person, but sometimes I'm so busy, I, I would rather do that. And so we, we, we give of our time, and sometimes we don't have time. How many of you, sometimes you just don't have time? But that doesn't mean we can't give. And so generosity is not just giving of my money, it's, it's also giving of my time. It's also saying on an I serve team, I'm going to give of my time. Another thing, and, and we talk about this all the time, but it's so true, is sharing my talents. Sharing my talents. What is it that God has gifted you to do? What, what is it? What, what has he given you that's distinctive to you? I mean, what, what is it? Because it's funny how all week we use our talents for our profession and what we've learned to do. What could we do if we use those same abilities in the house of God? When I was putting this together, I was thinking of, I was thinking of none other than Dane Van Scooten. He's one of the best carpenters you're ever going to find. Dane, you owe me. No, I'm serious. But Dane will come and do things here at the church. Why? Because he's talented to do it. He can do things I can't figure out. And he's got that gifting. He, what is it that you're just, you're just a natural at? You're just a natural. It's just, you know, there's some things that I can do that's easy for me that you would hate to do. But you know what? There's things that you can do that I would hate to do. Because God's gifted you for that. So again, what, what could we do if we brought those abilities in the house of God? And so we share our talents with somebody else. Praise team gets up here and sings. Again, I say this all the time. I couldn't do that. And, and let me throw this out just real quick. Know what your lane is. And stay in your lane. That will help you and it will help me. And then the third thing is this. Be willing to invest our treasure. Here's the, here's the thing. I believe that it begins in the house of God, but I don't believe it stops there. I don't think it stops there. This is why we want to bless outside of these four walls. Because there are sometimes we will never see a return. We, we won't ever see a return. Again, when we invest in this house, and I'm thankful that you do, we see the returns. We can see baptisms. We can see people uh, getting set free. We can see those kids coming out of LTK with a big smile on their face and, and, and having a great time. We see the return. But you know what? It's good every once in a while to give to something that you may never see a return of. You're just being generous. You're just saying, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna. to. And so we just, we just invest our treasures in places that we'll never see the return. And Jesus Christ is the greatest example of that. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave. So he lived that out. He come, came to earth. The Bible says that he was on the cross despising the shame, but looking toward the glory, he endured the suffering of the cross. Man, you talk about being generous about sowing in ways that are unbelievable. Jesus Christ did that for us. He sowed in ways that was unbelievable. He was so generous. That's why we have to be generous. People say, I'm a Christian. You know what a Christian is? It's to be Christ-like. What's he? He's generous. While you and I were yet sinners, the Bible said, while we were still his enemy, he died for us. And I have to say, man, he's been generous to me. He's been generous to me. So how can we live any other way than to be generous day in and day out? How can we do that? And so I want us to stand tonight. We're going we're gonna to talk about this just for a moment, but we're going to get ready to take communion. 
Because as I begin to think about the generosity of Jesus Christ, I begin to think about what he done and how generous he was to me. Again, when I think about how good he has been, his grace and mercy are far more than I could ever understand or comprehend. He's been so good to me. I shouldn't even be here. I shouldn't be standing here. I shouldn't be holding this mic like this. I should be having to hold it like this and walking like this. I, I shouldn't even be here. He's been so good to me. How can I not be generous? And you say, well, so you give money for that. No, how can I not be generous in my praise? I mean, I got to be generous in my praise. And so tonight, as we get ready to take communion, I want us to be generous in our praise. I want us to thank him because he is a generous God. When you go out tonight, you know what? There's going to be a, just a, a cool breeze blowing. Man, how generous is that? You're going to go home and you're going to hit a little switch and a light's going to come on. Man, how great is that? How great is that? You're going to lay in a nice soft bed tonight. How great is that? If the Lord's willing, you're going to wake up in the morning to start a brand new day. And as soon as your feet hit the floor, guess what? There's new mercies. How good is that? How good is that? And so tonight, we realize, you know what? Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. And so if I want to be like him, you know, years ago they were, I think it was Michael Jordan, that the slogan was going around, I, I want to be like Mike. I've never wanted to be like Mike. I want to be like Jesus Christ. And you know what? If I'm going to be like Jesus Christ, it's got to be more than just coming out of my mouth. i got to act like it. And one of his attributes is being generous. And so I'm going to be generous in every area of my life. And so tonight, I'm going to read our communion scripture. And as we take communion and when we get done with communion, I want us to be generous with our praise. I want us to be thankful. God, you blessed me so I could bless others. When you begin to think about it, he hung on Calvary. He took the abuse so we could be blessed. Some of you teens, some of you kids, my kids, now that they're, they're older now, but mom and dad worked so hard so you could be blessed. They went to work when they didn't feel like going to work. They did jobs they didn't feel like doing so you could be blessed. Think about your heavenly father. He hung on the cross. He didn't want to. Because when he was in the garden, he said, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But he said, however, I love my kids that much. Oh, you know what? I'd rather just sleep in tomorrow. But you know what? I love my kids that much. I'm going to go to work. I love my family that much. And so Jesus loved us that much that he said, I'm going to give my life. And he said, I want you to be like me. I want you to be like me. Love people. Be generous. And so tonight, as you get your communion cups ready, I want to pray over us. 
I want you to pray as well. Be generous in that. Thank him. Let him know. You know what? Lord, we remember how generous you've been to us. And because you've been generous to us, we're going to be generous to you. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. And Lord, once again, we thank you. We thank you that we serve a God that is generous, that he does not withhold any good gift. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you tonight, Lord, as we are taking communion, we can remember, Lord, what you've done. And again, Lord, we tonight, we are going to be generous in our worship. We're going to be generous in our praise. Lord, we're going to be generous in our talents, our time. Why, Lord? Because you were. And so, Lord, tonight as we are involved in this communion, Lord, we do it in remembrance of you. So we thank you for that right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And that's what I want us to do. I want us to break it. Break it. He said, this is my body, which was broken for you. How generous is that? He said, take and eat. Because I broke it for you. And so let's do that right now. He said, as you're doing this, remember me. Remember how generous he was. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. He said, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's do that. So right now, I want us to be involved and let's give him some generous worship in this house. As the praise team singing, give him some generous worship. Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, we worship you tonight. Lord, we thank you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank him for being generous in your life. 